like well, the Brian Nash used players. to shoot threes, and now he doesn't. So that made them a better team. Uh, you know, he's. I think he's taken four this year. Is all, and, and uh, uh, you know, he's still shooting perimeter shots, but he's he's probably getting in to the 16, 17 foot range more often. He's so good at putting it down. But I don't know if it makes him a better team that he's not shooting as many threes. I just think that, uh, you know, he's 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 having a much better year. Uh, I mean, as far as uh, uh, his being efficient, at least from what I can tell. And, and, you know, maybe he just has put more of a focus in trying to score in tight because that's what the team needs. But but I, I think he's, you know, he's obviously having a terrific year. You got a great penetrator like a Nash, and then two real good shooters in Brown and Forte. Do you leave the shooters, or do you? What do you do? do you, you guard. You guard. Uh, uh, you, when you say you mean LeBron Nash is a penetrator, or Marcus Smart? No, I'm Marcus. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you got to guard the ball. I mean, you can't help off of those guys too much at all. And, and uh, we're going to have to do a good ball, job of showing strong help and. Basically, having Marcus think that no matter which way he goes, he's got one and a half guys guarding him, and uh, but still not giving up, not giving up open looks to their shooters. And you know, Markel, what did he make six against this last year? Was it five or six uh, 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 in the first half? I think he made five in the first half, and maybe six for the game. And then Forte is is uh, I think he's already made like forty six or something like that on the year. So. Uh, uh, those are two guys we got to get to. But Marcus is making shots too. Marcus is shooting a, a pretty good percentage and made more threes this year. So we, you know, there's a lot of guys you got to guard on the perimeter. A lot of guys in Marcus's situation last year probably wouldn't have come back. Have you seen progress, and where has that been with him? Yeah, I think I think he's uh, he's had a good year. I mean, I think he hasn't hurt himself at all. You know, the the thing I I I heard. Uh, uh, you know, Jay Bill has say something the other day is is when when you're when you know that you're really good like that, then staying another year is not going to hurt you. You know, if it, if it helps you mature or whatever to handle the things that go along with having an NBA lifestyle, things like that. So I, it was it was probably a, a good decision for him to come back. And and I know it's been great for the program. And, you know, they, they, they've been from start to now you know, probably the, the most consistent and best team in our league so far. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, of course, he's a, he's a huge reason why. But, you know, the thing that amazes me about him is that he, he you know, impacts an entire program from a personality standpoint. And, and uh, he's, been a, he's been great in that regard. Part of his personality is, uh, came out when he did the backflip on the court, this court. Did that bother you at all, or is that just? What bothered me is the fact that we played like crap, uh, more so than somebody else doing a backflip. Uh, uh, if we'd have played better, then that wouldn't have happened. You know, it's, it's things like that don't bother me. Uh, 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 yeah, you know, the, the, you know, that's like, uh, you know, uh, you do something wrong, and and then you know, for. If a player uh, uh, does something wrong and and then he's mad at the teammate that told on him that he did it wrong, well, he should have never done it wrong to begin with. I mean, we we had a chance to we had a chance to uh, to win that game and we didn't do it. And and he did do a back flip and I watched it on tape and I thought it was beautiful form. I thought I thought he tucked just at the right time and and got full extension and I thought it was very impressive. <laughs> what that win do? For you guys in the short term, or that loss in the short term and, and the long, because into the streak, and then you have the two other ap after that. Did you learn from the long term, and did it kind of rally you? Rally you Last streak? year's loss here. Yeah. Well, it it it. People get so hung up on this. It ended the streak. I think we gone like one like 105 out of 106 or something like that at home or something like that. I, you know. In a row. Was it only 18 in a row last year? I thought it was 30 something. But but. Well, I mean, all of them. Oh, you there's mean, several streaks, you know. So, so yeah, we'd won like 18 in a row, and we won 30 something in a row at home, and you know, and all this stuff, which people make a big deal out of that, but that doesn't mean anything. Uh, 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 I, th I think, uh, you know, obviously we didn't handle it very well because we lost our next two games in a row after that, and I think I did a poor job coaching them uh, uh, after we lost. I shouldn't have made a big deal out of losing that one game. It's too long a season, and I probably did, and, and it probably hurt our team. Uh, uh, but you know, I, I think I think the, the the stuff that we went through last year, without question, made us a better team. 
and I'm hopeful that we've gone through enough stuff this year that we don't have to go through, you know, a, a, a stretch like that. But, uh, you know, it, there's nothing wrong with losing to good teams. I mean, that, that happens in our sport. Fortunately, we were able to steal one back when we went to Stillwater last year and got them down there in, in overtime. Well, they, they any different now with, with Cobbins out? Have they changed much? You, you know what? I, I haven't studied a ton of tape with Cobbins because I've been studying the most recent games. So uh, I would say they're a little different. You know, obviously, they, that's one less big guy to have. And I thought he was a you know, a great rim protector and kind of an anchor for him. But Murphy's good. You know, Murphy's doing a good job too. So it, it, it definitely uh, creates a situation where they have less depth. But I don't know if, I don't know if it's really affected them much uh, in less depth becomes a, a concern. Coach, how much does a 3-0 start in conference play give confidence to such a young team? Well, I think, it, I think it gives us confidence because we went on the road and won in a couple of tough places. Uh, uh, and we got a good home win, you know, sandwiched in between them. But um, I, I, th I think we needed the confidence because we haven't really had a chance to get a lot of it yet this year. Uh, so I, th I think it's important that we – I think we're, we're probably as confident as we've been any point in time this year, and that doesn't guarantee we're going to play good. But I think, I think our guys' minds are in the right spot right now. After Andrew pulled down 19 rebounds, is that something you're uh, looking for more of? Obviously not that big a performance. But yeah, well, he could be, a, you know, I, we've said all along he could be as good an offensive rebounder as, as there was, period. You know, and, and you know, a, a guy that athletic can get a run and start, you know, he should impact it more. And in the last two games he's gotten 10. So uh, uh, I do think that he's seeing the benefit of him being active like that. Some of his best games come against, it seems like, ranked teams or high-profile games. Is he one of those kids that just – Rises to the occasion. You know that's a great point because so many times people get hung up on, uh, you know, overall stats and things like that. But you know, I think if you were going to ask NBA people, they'd want to see how he played when they played against the best competition and 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 the best teams. And and you know, with the exception maybe of one game, he's had really big games in our hardest games. Uh, so. Uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased about that. And of course, Saturday will be one of our hardest games without question. So we're going to need him to be big uh, there too. But, but I, I do think he's, he's learning how to impact the game more ways uh, as he's moving forward. You know, he's just young. And you know, with all the hype, and Eric and I talked about this earlier, with all the hype coming in, anything he did was going to be less than what the hype said he should do. And, but the bottom line is he just kind of figured out, figuring it out and he's playing his natural position. And, and uh, you know, it's a position that he's never played before, and, and, and uh, he's learning how to impact the game more and more. With him finishing at the rim, it seems like the last week or two he's been getting to the rim a lot. It's kind of finishing around there has been more difficult. Yeah, I, you know, if he was, if he had made more layups this year, the kid would be averaging twenty. Uh, uh, you know, he's missed a lot of layups, and I think sometimes is is I've even heard announcers say this, kind of avoiding the contact a little bit and, and not coming away with free throws. And, and that could be a little bit true. Uh, uh, but I think he's doing a much better job of, of finishing right now than what he was before. I don't, I don't think he's avoiding any contact at all. Joel is um, impressed slash surprised with his own growth as everybody else is. Uh, you know what? I don't think that uh, – I haven't talked. That's something I don't say. Hey, are you even surprising yourself? I don't talk to our guys like that. But uh, I, I, I would say that I would say the answer is probably no. I would think that he knows that he. Joe is one of the the, the few kids that actually sees things objectively about himself. Uh, you know, we we can look at our. You know, it's hard. You can't be objective about your own children. That's impossible. But he's actually objective about himself on where he is. And I think that's one thing that, that so he can study himself, say, you know what, I should be doing this or I should be doing that. So I don't think that I don't think his play would surprise himself at all. If anything, I, I think he would say, well, just wait, I can do a lot more. I take it that's a, that's a rarity thing, objective about your. Oh, opinion. I think it's a real rarity with players. I think every player thinks that they're the best shooter and the best passer and the best ball handler. And the coach is definitely has it in for him because he's not playing 40 minutes a game. I mean, every player thinks that. Uh, uh, but Joe doesn't. He's one of those guys. No, I can see why you took me out. Oh, God, I didn't even do this or that. You know, so, but few guys see it that way. Do you worry with Joel that 
a couple incidents here in the last couple of games about getting kind of a reputation. As a yeah, I, I could say I, I, that concerns me a little bit, but there wasn't a couple of incidents. There was one incident. You know, the deal at Iowa State was nothing. Uh, uh, that had to be a, a, a technical and I, I learned, I'm learning the rules as we go. I've only been doing this for 30 years, but I, I'm starting to figure the rules out. But it had to be a technical because it was a, a contact when the, when the ball was dead. So, so, uh, so when the ball goes to the net and before they take it out, the ball's dead, even though the clock's running, which I don't understand dead, but clock's running. But, but, uh, so, so therefore, if there's a, a foul, then, then they had to give him the – a contact technical if it occurred during that time frame, and so that was only that was the only call they can make. And so, but no, there was nothing blatant or bad about that at all. The kid was falling down. He grabbed a guy and he slung him down with him, uh, which you know that can happen sometimes. But that's just a normal foul call any other time of the game. Where do you see Joel's potential ceiling in six to ten years? Could he be a perennial NBA All Star? Uh, well, six or ten years from now. Well, let's see. Dwight will be gone. Uh, there'll be some guys gone, so I, I would think that he would have a chance to be that. I, I think that Joe has a chance to be a, uh, a, a, an NBA All Star. I do. You know, there's a lot of good players that recruit that you recruit, and, and they have great careers for you. But can you look at them and say, can he be, you know, one of the best 24 players in the world? Uh, I would say that five, ten years from now, maybe he could be in that class. I, I do think he has that potential, but but that doesn't mean anything close to that. He's anywhere close to being that now. He's just a kid trying to figure it out. And, and that's the one thing about our two kids more than anybody else's, maybe in America, is you have that potential tag hung around their neck, which basically means they haven't done anything yet. And so you know, nobody knows how they're going to react, how hard they'll continue to work. How, you know, it's hard to pro pro project 10 years from now based on intangibles. And, and so, but I would say if it's very possible. Share with them, both of them, what you think is the best path to get there, to be the best player you can be at the end of the year when you talk to them. If you believe that is returning, do you tell them that, or do you? Uh, I probably won't tell them that. No. I, if 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 uh, you know, this is way too early to be talking about this. But but I, I would I would want them to make a decision that's best for their life, and then give them pros and cons and all that stuff, and, and then they should move forward and act on that. But I wouldn't hold my breath if I was a Kansas fan uh, around here, you know, if the guys keep getting better. Is Joel's, um, I don't know what you would call it, his competitiveness or his phys physical nature, does that come across in practice? I mean, Yeah, it, yeah. I don't know if it's his phys physical nature as much as it is that he's competitive. You know, it's, it's hard to be real physical against Tariq. Uh, every day, because no matter what, Tariq always looks like he's the most physical one, and, or Landon. But Joe has gotten much tougher and much more physical, I would say, since we started practicing without question. And he, I don't know that he enjoys, you know, all the contact, uh, uh, but it doesn't seem like to me it bothers him much. And, and he's learning how to play through contact. So he's, he's becoming more, more physical in nature and, and uh, you know he's he's uh, he's got to get stronger, but I think you guys can look at him and tell that he's gotten stronger just since the start, just since we started playing games. Do you, as a coach, I mean, just as a looking at a freshman, you almost enjoy some of that stuff. I mean, I know it's not good for you guys if he's on the bench, but would you prefer that to the alternative? Of oh, I'd much rather calm a guy down than turn him up. You know, what if, if if you got to constantly turn guys up, then then over time. Cons Consistently, it's it's going to end up a little bit less than what you want. I'd I'd much rather it's just like any anything. You start out hard, then you back off if you need to, but you can't start off easy and then pick up hard. So so uh, uh, you bet I absolutely like it. But he, but if anybody says that Joel Embiid is physical uh, uh, or one of the most physical players around, then that's not true. I mean he he's he's not that at all. But but he's getting more physical uh, as he's getting a little bit more confidence. Is it too early in conference play, or do you think that you've already started to reap the rewards of your tough non-conference schedule? No, nah, I think it's probably a little early. I don't really think the non-conference schedule matters right now. I think it may have helped us win a couple of games on the road, uh, but I don't know if it. I don't, I don't know if our non-conference schedule will help us winning in Waco or or uh, Austin uh, any more than what winning at Norman or Ames did. So I think our non-conference schedule probably prepared us for 
early conference road games. But, but from this point forward, our conference will prepare us for our conference. It's that good. Do you want Nadir to shoot more? When he's open, yeah. I, I like to see, like, Nod turn down a couple of three looks against Iowa State when he was, when he was uh, definitely on a roll. But, I, yeah, I want, I want to see Nadir look to score uh, when he's open. Uh, I want to see him be a better ball mover, too. I think sometimes the ball, I don't know if you guys notice it, when he gets on a roll, sometimes the ball can stick, stick, stick. And if he's not going to shoot it, then move it. Uh, uh, but, you know, he's, he's still playing at a pretty high level right now. I, I've been real pleased with him. How has he done leading the young guys? I think he's done great. I, 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 think, he, I think he's done uh, really well. Uh, uh, I think the guys are looking to him as, a, as kind of a rock out there, which maybe we weren't doing early in the season. So he's getting his point across. Is, when he plays the way he's playing now, isn't it natural that they're going to look at him? I mean, you're, you can't lead unless you're performing. Can you? Yeah, that's exactly – well, yeah, that's exactly right. He's, But the thing I liked about it was – you guys won't think this – I liked him at K-State. The guy doesn't make a shot, and he controls the game. You know, so, so uh, those are the things that I, I, I like seeing because I don't think as a point guard you can base your performance on whether the ball goes in or not. You still got to figure out a way to help your team win, and I think he's doing a pretty good job of that. I see a guy that needed to be built back up after a couple weeks ago. I know he was kind of split in time. And yeah. Kind of oh, I don't know. I think he needed to, to, to probably know that I liked him. Uh, be real candid. You know, I love the kid. He knows that. But, you know, I get kind of frustrated with, with – got kind of frustrated with him, and he knew that. And, and uh, I, think, I think he handled it well. But he went through a period of time where – which all players go through. I mean, all players in the course of the season go through a, a, a week or a 10-day period where they don't – uh, uh, play quite as well, maybe get their confidence shaken a little bit, but he's he's got his back down. Isn't that the position that's most likely that a coach is going to get frustrated with the point guard? Oh, there's no question. You know, I mean, if you have a bad possession late game, whose fault is it? It's point guard. I'm not going to blame Joe. You threw it to him. You know, it, it, it's 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 the point guard's fault. I mean, that's the, but but also coaches know that when you have good possessions late and things like that, it's usually to the point guard's credit. So, so uh, I think that, that, that goes with the territory.